Angeles, the city of angels and Dodger dogs. It's also home to beautiful beaches and glorious mountains. It's the land where everyone is famous or trying to be. Some people like to think of this place as a melting pot, but the salad bowl metaphor is better. LA is steeped in history and traditions because it's home to people from all over. But all most people think of when someone says Los Angeles is the snarling traffic and congestion. LA is a big place and color culture runs thick here. That means traffic, unfortunately, is just a way of life. Or is it? Yeah, the traffic sucks, but there is a way to see LA and still keep a smile on your face, and that's with scooters, my friends. Scooters. Scooters like the Suzuki Bergman 400 and the Piaggio BV 400. Classy looking things. Over there, my buddy John Burns. Behind me is the iconic Hollywood sign, probably what most of you think of when you think of Los Angeles. John had to go move the scooters before the parking guy gave us tickets, but while he's doing that, let me tell you what we're gonna do next. We are gonna go on a mini guided tour of LA, courtesy of the Suzuki and the Piaggio. We'll take you to some cool touristy spots, but also some cool, less known of locals only places. So come along for the ride, let's go have some fun. Our first stop is right around the corner from the famous Hollywood sign and is home to stars of a different kind. The Griffith Observatory is where people can see real stars. You know, up in the cosmos. The story of the Griffith Observatory is an interesting one as Griffith J. Griffith, yes, that's his real name, donated the land to the city of LA in the late 1800s and in his will, donated the funds to build an observatory partially of his design. Since 1935, the Griffith Observatory has been welcoming visitors free of charge to explore the depths of our galaxy. To date, over 7 million people have peered through its 12-inch refractored telescope, more than any other in the world. Griffith is also a chore to get to by car, but it's an absolute breeze on scooters. I mean, touring around on little scooters is kind of the thing I want to be on around here. Mm -hmm. They're pretty handy. As you can see, there's no place to park, but on a scooter you can squeeze in almost anywhere. Wherever you want. That's right. A 16-inch front wheel. Wow, mine's only 15, but they made it bigger in 2018. Uh-huh. Yours is still bigger. Well, it's not always about size, John. Anyhow, okay. if you're going to the park and you wanted to throw a child or a loved one on back of here, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, scooters really are the best way to get around town. Kind of are. Motorcycles are nice and all, but scooters are better for this kind of junk. I mean, that's a perfect example of the, you know, the state of the scooter. We're over here yearning to park free while the huddled mass is over there paying 10 bucks an hour in their minivans and stuff. Gotta love scooters, Johnny. I, I love them. Shall we stroll? Let's, and we can hold hands too. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> Downtown LA over there. Tourists, sightseers, and the obligatory guy in the knockoff Cookie Monster outfit you trying to get pictures with kids. Kind of creepy. Go and just, just punch him in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> How does this feel? Not even the real cookie monster. Mm -hmm. Guy's having a nice nap. Not a bad idea. I like his style. Sounds like you know something about this place, Johnny? Uh, it's the Griffith Observatory, the iconic uh, Los Angeles landmark. Uh, you know, it's where people have been coming to observe things for, for many years now. And many films have been shot up here, probably the most famous of which would be uh, James Dean and the famous Rebel Without a Cause. Hmm. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, or it's him. iconic. It's him? Iconic. No, the film, yeah. I think so. Just yeah. kidding. Yeah, yeah. Super iconic. So there's downtown LA. Yeah. Downtown. Tallest building on the west coast, and it that bank building down there. So there's no way getting through here on a car would be miserable, but cities all up and down the coast you can see from up here. There's still a lot more going that way too. And you can get to any of them on a scooter getting 65 miles a gallon. And a giant smile on your face and a latte in your hand. Mm-hmm. Speaking of lattes and smiles, and things food. to eat and drink. <laughs> it's getting to be like lunchtime, isn't it? I think you're about right, John. Well, Johnny, I know you said you're getting hungry, but uh, let's go to one more spot. I want to show you one more cool spot around here, and then we'll go get a bite to eat. All right, sounds good. The secret place I'm taking John is the old LA Zoo. This isn't really a tourist attraction for out-of-towners, but it's more of a local spot that's a good place to relax or play. 
As the name suggests, this spot was home to the LA Zoo from 1912 until 1966, where it housed animals big and small for the public to enjoy. But public pressure over the inhumane and inadequate conditions of the zoo basically forced the city to create the funds to open the current LA Zoo just two miles away. But instead of taking the old zoo down, most of the animal enclosures remain to this day. Now visitors can walk to the enclosures, see the limited space the animals had to walk in, and even see the pathways and steps the zookeepers used to get in and out of the cages. Hey, there's the, the, there's the Greek theater where I got to see Garrison Keeler one time. They actually got Travel Town with some real old actual trains. That's true. And uh, it used to have a really cool, cool model railroad, too. I don't That's know if true. they do anymore. It's just down the road from here. But that was cool. That's my favorite thing. Yeah, you've got the benefit under there, Piaggio says, to hold two half helmets, but I guess that full-size modular of yours ain't gonna fit. Large modular with a... Mr. Bergman over here. You've got this helmet lock, if you're into that kind of thing. Bad news is, if you have a communicator on your helmet, bonk, bonk, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna jive so well. Well, when you get it just right, you can get a size large modular in there. Just... Just <laughs> barely, just, uh, you can't really get one in there. See if the old Neotech tool will fit in the, the Bergman. Baby just goes right in there and kabammy. Oh yeah, nice. Nice. Uh, which, which way are we going, did you say? Oh geez, John. I guess I'm gonna hold my helmet and follow you along. You don't know where you're going. Uh, uh. Kind of takes me back to being a little kid in Alabama in the 60s, had a, had a zoo like that. The, the, the polar bears live in an enclosure like this, and they'd just be lying out front in a pool, a pool of their own sweat. I was going to say. It's kind of humid down there. A polar bear in Alabama seems like a really yeah, yeah. bad decision by somebody. But this kind of, uh, this concrete work really, really held up well since 1912 or something, had, and it looks good. According to the sign, if you can make out the graffiti, all this stuff you see here was built in the 30s, I think. Uh, this is the Los Angeles Zoo. Chachi loves Joni. It's about all I can read. Works Progress Administration. Huh. Cool, so yeah, it was 30s. WPA. Yeah. Once bears, lions, monkeys, macaws, goats. Yeah. Turtles, among others, lived here and mated and tried to escape. <laughs> So, I mean, like, could you imagine a, a lion or a bear in here? And then back here, you can still kind of see the staircases and the doors where the zookeepers used to come down and feed the animals their, their grub. I think if there were gorillas and things, it'd be a bad place to try to have a picnic. I don't know. <laughs> I think this is cool. You can't go into a modern zoo and like go inside the enclosures and then go see where the old zookeepers used to come down. I mean, check out that door. It's, uh, uh, it's about uh, as big ooh, as my kid. Ee, ee, ooh, ooh. And look yeah, how this. steep those stairs are. Anyway, that's it for the zoo. I mean, it goes on further that way. And there's a little bit more stuff you could see at the top, but I can hear your stomach growling. So let's skedaddle. Being a caged animal, you know, you're only, the high point of your day is eating really. So, you know, this is a good place to come. It just reinforces our, our nutritional. Our primal desires. Selfie, for, oh, selfie buddy. Obligatory, obligatory. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. We can insert thing later on. All right. Food. Squirrel. The beauty of having so many different cultures in LA is having access to so many different types of food. LA is a food town, and the Grand Central Market has been bringing together the town's diverse flavors since 1917. With 40 stalls to choose from, the market is a microcosm of the immigrant communities that have shaped Los Angeles and call this city home. It's also in the heart of downtown LA, which is a nightmare to get to by car. On these scoots, though, navigating the one-way streets, congested lanes, and clogged parking lots is as easy as can be. Um, can I get the uh, potato pupusa? Which is, uh, 
Yes. Uh, the spinach, pupusa. Okay. Ooh. Garlic one, is that the good one? Yeah. Garlic, okay. Yay, thanks. A small horchata. It's my pupusa at last. It's worth the wait though, it's tasty. It's like trying to get a showy in the Piaggio. Ah. Well, while we're letting this food settle in our stomachs, let's chat scooters. What do you think so far? Let's talk scooters. Piaggio, Suzuki. I think they're both great. You can't go wrong with either one of them. All right, and we're done here. Good night, y'all. Just kidding. Well, we're not done yet, but I, I like the Suzuki so far. I like the engine of the, of the Piaggio. It's like it's got a little more poop than the Suzuki. Runs a little smoother. But everything else I like better about the Suzuki, I think. You know, I kind of agree with you on that. I like the ergonomics of the Suzuki. You can kind of like, yeah, you I know. Too. Kind of long and low. You can throw your legs out and get comfy, but the punch on that Piaggio is pretty sweet. One, two, three. I usually don't like the cruiser ergonomics at all, but if this is one case that I actually do kind of, because you can kind of put your feet or you can move your feet back here on the floorboards on the Suzuki. It works. Also, on the if scooter. you want to, and the seat's pretty, pretty cush. Yeah. And I, I like it because it's low. I'm not tall, and I can get both feet down on the Suzuki. On the Piaggio, I'm getting my toes down. Yeah. The seat's quite a bit high. higher, and it's kind of wide. So it's hard to put your toes down. The two bikes are parked over there, and I gotta say that Piaggio just looks better. It's got the whole style thing down. You think it does have the style thing? I think so, and it has those bright LED lights and looks nice and sculpted and... Well, the, the Suzuki's got the LEDs on, on the rear at least, I think on the front too. But I was going to say, like the performance of the two of them is so close. I almost have to go to Suzuki because of the styling. It's got the long, low kind of, like the classic Japanese custom scooter thing going on that... Uh... Yeah, no, I'm torn. I like the... Ergos on the Suzuki, but that Piaggio has got some nice punch to it, some good poop to it. Yeah, I kind of like the drivetrain better on the Piaggio, but that's about it. Either way, though, both of those things are great for getting around all this LA traffic. While well, all these sh schmucks and cars are stuck at a stop and go traffic, we can just scooch in between them and. Schmucks? <laughs> we can scooch in between that's them harsh. and. Like, that's get harsh, but, but, but you're right. Oh, I forgot to mention, the Piaggio is cheaper. On oh, the Piaggio, yeah. yeah. You know, it is 1200 bucks cheaper, but it's kind of reflected in the overall machine to me. It feels a little cheaper. I mean, the switch gear feels like my like 40-year-old 40, 40 clothes dryer at home <laughs> with the, the bake light dial that always breaks and stuff, you know? And I guess they've been making scooters for many decades, and they're the world's biggest manufacturer scooters so it's probably not going to break but some of the switch gear just feels kind of cheap and plasticky to me. I mean, on the other hand Suzuki's been using that same key for the past 40 years. But it's a little bit higher class <laughs> of, a, of a thing than the one Piaggio's been using forever. I mean speaking of sort of like tech both bikes have TC both bikes have ABS I mean, I don't know how you're gonna need it on either one of those things. Well, you might, you'll need the ABS if somebody pulls out, but. Oh no, TC, T ABS I get, but TC, you're not gonna need. Speaking of which, the Piaggio, the levers, they're, they're kind of square away. edged and kind of far away, and I really got a workout of my fingers riding that. Same. I don't know if they're any less powerful than the Suzuki, because of the cheaper levers they use that aren't adjustable, they're harder to use the brakes, they take more effort. I agree with that, yeah. That might be as easy as changing the levers, you know. It probably it's a simple is, thing to do. As they sit. As they sit. As delivered. As delivered. I gotta go with the Suzuki for the brakes too. <laughs> Suzuki's comfortable, Piaggio's got power. But both are great for zipping through town, dodging traffic, getting to where you're gonna go, touring around LA without absolutely getting frustrated and just so mad. Yeah, it's really cool because I put I put 100 miles on the Piaggio since yesterday. It's still got half a tank of gas in it. Yeah. Probably more than that, you know, it'll get me home again tonight. And with gas prices being so high, you can spend 10 bucks and still get a full tank or something like that. If we do wanna, you know, 
reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, maybe taking public transit is the way. And that right there, Angel's Flight, is the shortest railway in the entire U.S. at just under 300 feet long. Pretty old too, isn't it? It's pretty old too, yeah. You don't think it's going to break halfway up and won't come sliding back down, do you? This train feels like it has about the same uh, current era of technology as the Piaggio, really. You know, you may not be wrong. Now I kid, the train's 100 years old, the Piaggio's probably only 80, 70 years old. Give it some know. credit, exactly. It's got fuel injection. What does this thing have? Some it's cables? Bad. Well, I think it's a dollar to go up, and it's probably ten <laughs> to, come back, to come, come back down. You want to go back down? Well, they've got stairs. You know what? Stairs. I can walk down the stairs. I just can't. Stairs walk are double. free. We can burn yeah. off these yeah. uh, papooses we just mm -hmm. scarf down. Mm -hmm. oh, doesn't yeah, doesn't roll. quite have the same pickup as that Suzuki, but once it gets going, like the Suzuki, it's as if it's on rails. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, slide right. Yeah. <laughs> That, that sounds just like the Suzuki when it's getting through the gears there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yep, WD-40 maybe, I don't that, know. That's the Piaggio when the fan comes on. <laughs> it does have a loud cooling fan. Holy moly. That's our next career of trains.com. Well, uh, yeah, um, that was the shortest yeah, train ride in the world. Move. Now we're going to document that too. Train! Got her. All right, let's go to the beach Here or something. Go. Here we go. All righty, John, the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's get on the freeway and stretch the legs of these bad boys. Can't be any more dangerous than riding this <laughs> train, I'm thinking. I got the gate right that time. Mm -hmm. Into the depths of the unknown. Reminds me I got to schedule my colonoscopy. <laughs> Elbow down. Oh, oh, tight on. left. Oh. oh say that baby tightened up on a stingy. And fire in the hole. Alrighty, John, we've got these two scooters on the freeway finally. Uh I mean, this is where these two things really shine, is cutting through LA traffic. Although it's not nearly as badly gridlocked as it normally is. Yeah, it's not bad right now, is it? Nonetheless, this is where the power advantage of uh, the Piaggio really comes through, or at least the perceived power advantage. Uh, that's true there, uh, Troy, Troy boy. The, um, that Piaggio is geared a little bit taller too. You'll be doing 7,500 RPM on it and about 90 miles an hour. Yeah, sometimes I look down this Piaggio and I can't believe I'm doing 90. Yeah, crazy. it's really smooth too. You need a thousand more revs on the Bergman to do the same speed. It's turning yeah. like 8,500 at 90 miles an hour. But they're, they're both pretty damn smooth. The Piaggio, a little smoother. I kind of like the Piaggio because your head's a little bit closer to the windshield when you're going yeah. that fast. So uh, it's less blustery. It's good for listening to talk radio on your uh, <laughs> on your Cardo pack top mold. It's nice and quiet behind that one. It's just <laughs> a little a little bit loose, and but it never does anything untoward. The Bergman, at its top speed, it's really planted, and you know you'd ride this thing all day and not not even not even be worried about it. I mean, to be fair, riding all day, we just saw a guy in a Jixer come in the other direction on the freeway. And I would much rather be on any of these scooters than being, being that poor sap riding a sport bike down the freeway for miles on end. No tour of LA is complete without going to the beach. There are no shortages to choose from, of course, but we're choosing Venice this time around. Wish they all could be California girls. Home to Muscle Beach, beautiful murals, and the quintessential California laid-back lifestyle. Isn't it cute? Isn't it quaint here in Venice? Quite pretty. Venice also has a thriving arts community. Not to mention its own set of canals like the Italian city it shares a name with. There's no budget for Venice, Italy, but we can go to 
Venice, California, and look at the canals this way. Venezia to you. That's not a coincidence either, as local developer Abbott Kinney built several miles of canals here in 1905 as part of his Venice of America project. But by the 1920s, the growing popularity of cars meant more roads needed to be built, and nearly all the canals were filled in and paved over, except for the four that remain today. Alrighty, John, we made it to the beach. No trip to California is complete without a trip to the beach, right? Yeah, it's not a bad spot to be, is it? It's like uh, if you get off the, the freeway, which the scooter makes it easy to do, LA's yeah. not so bad. These are, uh, this was a pretty good run. And that's a wrap on our tour of Los Angeles. LA has so much more to offer, of course, but hopefully our little tour has inspired you to get out and explore, and to do it by scooter if you can. As for the Suzuki and Piaggio, both are perfect for getting around LA. The Suzuki is more comfortable and holds more stuff, but the Piaggio makes more power and arguably looks better too. And it's cheaper. Hey, look at that. It's the Santa Monica Pier. How sweet is that? Pretty sweet. Doesn't get much more quintessential LA than this, does it? I think the word you're looking for, which is repeatedly overused, it's iconic. This is a fitting end. This is as far as you can go. We did it. To us, the ideal scoot would have the Bergman's comfort and the BV's power. Anyway, we hope you had a good time coming along with us and have found a new appreciation for scooters. As always, be sure to smash that like button, and while you're at it, tell us in the comments section where you like to take your scooter. And as always, ride safe, and we'll see you later. Sing me a serenade, John. In those Hollywood hills, in those Hollywood nights. Ah, oh, that lovely baritone. Is he passing out free cookies or what? That's kind of weird. Does, it, does he have cookies? <laughs> Do you trust his cookies? Wow, what is this? It's we'll like it, a movie like we're, Motorcycle.com, you'll see yourself there next week. What do you think? Uh, the, the, I kind of think the China Cafe when we first walked in looked kind of good to me. All right, let's go back you're Chinese. Hey now, hey now. No, you're not. Easy, easy. I'm, I'm actually Chinese. <laughs> there you go. Everybody gets to be in it. Yeah, we're all, we're all stars. <laughs>